Hello again everyone and thanks for joining me on our subject of narcissism. Truth fears no investigation. It's an old saying, you've probably heard it before, and if you're just hearing it today, think about that for just a minute. Truth fears no investigation. Now, not telling the truth is not just a trait for narcissists or narcissism, but they typically use that as in uh, one of as one of their uh, tools in their arsenal. Truth fears no investigation. If you are trying to build something with someone, it is imperative that you know the truth. It's imperative that you are uh, receiving and giving accurate information. Other than that, you're not going to have uh, you're not going to have a meaningful uh, dialogue, nor will you have a meaningful uh, relationship with folks that are either unwilling or unable to tell the truth. And I'm not talking about just cash register honesty on this one. I'm talking about big things and little things alike. And it also depends on the proximity that you are to the people that you are uh, having uh, dialogue with. If someone's close to you, they need to be truthful. That's just the way it is. There's no, uh, there's no two ways about this. The further someone is away from you, the, the further their proximity, the less that you know them, the less that it becomes, uh, at least in our society today, uh, the less important it becomes. But the closer someone is, the more important it becomes. Uh, violating trust is a big deal with most people. The narcissist could care less about your trust, only care about manipulating the situation to get what they want. Remember, you're nothing more than an appliance or a tool to the narcissist. They could care less. They see a refrigerator, a car, a toaster, money, a person. It's all the same to them. However, it is a red flag. It doesn't necessarily mean that someone that maybe is not quite 100% honest is uh, that they're a narcissist or a cluster B personality disordered person, but it is something that needs to be corrected. On the subject of narcissism, why are we here? Why are we? Why do we visit this this issue and these platforms over and over again? And I think the simple answer is to be clear, to move away from the thought processes that we used to have when we were around the narcissist. It's very important that once you understand what a narcissist does, that you move completely away from them and you start to fill your time and your mind with other things. It can be difficult at first because narcissism is like a parasite. It's like a cancer. It, it, it seems to uh, or tends to grow in ways that you don't see, that you don't understand until some I was going to say sometimes, all the time it might be too late. They have caused at least some damage, if not a significant amount of damage. It's extremely important to fill your mind and your time with something other than what the narcissist had been giving you all along. The distorted ways that they think and you deferring to someone that you trust is a recipe for disaster, I can tell you firsthand. And if you've been in one relationship like that, no matter if it's with a parent or a spouse or friends or even work relationships, when I say relationship, I don't mean always a romantic relationship, although that's a, a big, uh, it's a big chunk of uh, that and familial relationships are probably the lion's share of, uh, uh, of the relationships that I'm talking about. If these folks are, if you're not clear if you have a distorted way of thinking uh, caused by the narcissist, it's imperative to begin to move in a direction that uh, to clear that up. And this can take years to happen. I know it can take a really long time. I've mentioned before. I thought, oh, it's just this really angry, angry guy. Well, once the narcissist left, so did all the problems. That's how you know it's not you. Because we question that. We wonder, what am I doing? What can I do? 
How can I do something better? What, what is it that I'm doing that's causing this person to behave in this way? And you're not doing anything. That's what they do because they enjoy it. Not because they've been abused or somehow they've suffered that same fate. It's not, that's, that's nonsense. I don't buy that at all because otherwise you and I would be, we would be acting like the narcissist, right? So when the narcissist leaves, it's time to replace those thoughts with something positive. What you put in your mind is very important really what you think about you bring about so um, it's really just a, a uh, I don't want to say a growing up phase but a, a becoming maybe that sounds a little esoteric doesn't it that you're becoming something else uh, I noticed when I started to set boundaries for some of these people and it's not just not it's not always the people close it can be sometimes people that are moderately close when you set a boundary for someone they suddenly don't like you because you're interfering with their plans even though it's you know your property or your money or something that you've earned that they want or they want use of suddenly you become the uh, you, you become the bad guy or girl gal if uh, you don't let them have their way and this is just uh, this is kind of across the board today we see a lot of this all over the place and it's unfortunate you know that um, uh, they're not going to change and most of the people out there in society are not going to change so it leaves us so what are we going to do like i said why do we come and visit this this issue well uh, because we're you know we're learning I, I i couldn't even believe when i started to when it started to occur to me the behavior of some of the people that i trusted and i trusted them deeply i had no idea that they would inflict the kind of damage that they would on my life and once I started to figure it out that you know these people not only they're phony and fake uh, they're dangerous too like I know phony and fake people but they're not dangerous to you they're just you know they're not grown up or they they're not self-actualized that's not what I'm talking about that's only part of it they're also dangerous and they uh, intend on taking away from you all of them put together they were unable to destroy what I had made and destroy what I did. They were unable to do it. Oh, they tried. Oh my God. I had no idea that they were even trying. I was that happy fool that had no idea what was even happening. Uh, and maybe some of you can relate to that. Anyhow, um, fill your mind with something positive. I always tried to come to you with something that's that's going to help out the situation. One is that on the other side of the, of the narcissist, of dealing with them, I promise you it's like night and day. And I've, I've said this a couple of times, and I'll, I'll say it again. Even if it's your last 10 minutes on Earth and you realize what's been happening with these, these folks, these monsters, these less than humans, um, it's worth it. It's worth the last 10 minutes. Now, hopefully you get it sooner than later. It took me a really, really long time. And I had the misfortune of having to be around some of them again. Not really recently, but recent enough that I remembered. They don't change. They don't change one bit. So, uh, before I uh, wrap this up, a fellow was talking about the near enemy and the far enemy. And he was talking about loving kindness, which is the uh, having a, a benevolent attitude toward others and yourself and everything because it generates a, uh, a positive environment no matter where you're at. Well, I don't know if it could be no matter where you're at. I'm not sure if uh, I know anyone that could have a positive attitude like in cell block six or something. Anyway, anyway, the, this, this loving kindness has two enemies. Uh, of course, the far enemy, and it's the easy one, which is anger or hatred. And that's the far enemy. But this is there's something even more cunning about that is the close enemy and the close enemy is the hatred and anger that disguises itself as kindness to you and that just hit home that was like that is the narcissist that is the covert narc they pretend they pretend they pretend to get what they want and when they've got what they want they're absolutely done with you so anyhow remember on the other side of the narcissist things do get better once you get through those those inhumans and you get past uh, their the chaos and the, the the derangement that they can cause 
things start to get better. They can leave, however, um, some long-lasting wreckage in your life, and that's an issue. But as long as you can be, start to begin to move away from them and to go low contact, eventually you will go no contact and leave them to their own devices. So, all right. I hope that that is uh, beneficial to someone today. And I hope you all have a happy Saturday and the rest of your weekend. And I hope to see you all again real soon. Thanks.